so this market kind of devolved into what we like to call uh, unpredicted as a, as a classic predicted shit show. Warning. The political trade features probabilities and perspectives about politicians, political parties, political outcomes, and political wagering. The political trade is rated NSFP, not safe for partisans. Well, welcome back to The Political Trade, the podcast for people with a passion for politics, probability, and profits. I'm Jeff Joseph, editorial director of Luckbox Magazine, hosting the podcast where conservatives and liberals, Republicans and Democrats, partisans and wingnuts all come together to make money betting on politics by trading in the prediction markets at predicted.org, the stock market for politics that trades 24 7. Returning from last week's show is Derek Phillips, the prediction market trader who turned $400 into $400,000 and perhaps a little more since last week. He shared some great trading ideas last week, so up ahead we're going to look at how those turned out. Derek will also share another one of his most effective trading tactics and, of course, three of his favorite trades in the markets today. So that's what comes up ahead. And to get most out of this podcast, of course, you should open up predictit.org, click on the Markets tab, which is top left, follow along, and leave your political ideologies at the door. As always, I'm joined by Mike Reddy. Mike is an editor at Luckbox Magazine, a novice prediction market trader, and the producer of The Political Trade. Mike, I understand you have some updates that you want to share before we get started. Oh, that I do. But uh, before we get into that, would you mind playing track one? Don't make me do this, Mike. (laughs) Well, we're moving. All right, you're killing me. Are you going to speak now? Oh, no, we're going to enjoy this moment. Yes, finally got a piece of the pie, and we are moving on up. Uh, So every once in a while, I like to give our listeners a look behind the curtain, and I have uh, three updates to share today. Uh, We found out this morning that the political trade made Apple Podcasts top 120 podcasts in the politics category. So thank you to all of our listeners using Apple Podcasts. Couldn't have done it without you. Are we assuming there's more than 120 political podcasts out there? I think there's much more than 120 (laughs) political podcasts So that could be good news. I'd like to think we're the number one political prediction market podcast out there. Yeah, it's it's very possible. That might be the case. All right. Well, that's good news. What else do you have? Well, this is sort of following up with something that I said at the top of the last episode. I was uh, looking over our stats, um, and we've actually gained some listeners in Africa. So just want to do a quick shout out to our listeners in Africa. If we get some Antarctic listeners, we will officially be a worldwide podcast. So shout out to the African listeners. (laughs) There we go. And what else? Uh, and then the last bit of uh, the last update that I'd like to share is that we have a new homepage for this podcast, and on it you can find things like blog posts, every episode. You can find where we're playing. You can subscribe. Uh, to go there, you just go to luckboxmagazine.com/tpt, and TPT of course stands for the political trade. So check out the new homepage. Let us know what you think. And uh, those are my my three updates. That's great news. Well. We certainly do know that last week's podcast had featured Derek Derek Phillips, our man who turned $400 into $400,000, was the most listened to podcast since we launched The Political Trade, and that's why we brought him back this week to uh, keep on going and tell us more. And in the, over the last week, he's added to his his kitty a little bit, and we wanted to specifically revisit the trades that he shared with us last week. I know that you had some, um, you, some good fortune you cashed in on Derek's advice last week. Absolutely. Uh, not only did I take all of his trading ideas to heart, but I also took his tactic to heart. And during the last debate, I was doing quite a bit of penny flipping. Now, I don't have the biggest bankroll in the world, but uh, I still made a a decent chunk of change penny flipping the uh, time of possession or speaking time markets for that debate, especially because there was no counter out there this time. Uh, Well, congratulations. I I had uh, a similar story to share, and we'll bring Derek on. 
So, Derek, ha- having you back, uh, one of the first things we wanted to do was speak about your trade recommendations from last episode. Now, we know they performed well because Mike took every one of those trading rec- recommendations and made some money during the week. But we wanted to revisit each one of those. Um, you, you began last week with your first trade, which was in the how many Democrats will be running for president on April 1st market. You advocated buying no on two Democrats. And as we know, currently in the race is, uh, is Biden as the front runner and the presumed nominee, and Senator Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard from Hawaii. So there's three candidates, and there are three brackets in that market. You can buy one, you can buy two, or buy three candidates to still be in the race as of April 1st. You advocated the no position, and your thinking was it's either going to be all or none. So either both Sanders and Gabbard would drop out, leaving only Biden, or they would remain in the race until April 1st. And uh, since that, when you when you made that recommendation to us, the price was trading at about 50 cents. Uh, then it rallied from there, and it's uh, right now it's around 46 cents. I know make, Mike made some money on the upside of that, and where are you on that trade right now? Well, the reason that it's down to the 40s now is because about an hour ago, um, somebody misread a story from the Bloomberg terminal about um, Bernie Sanders cutting his ad spending on Facebook, and they they misread it and thought it said that he was dropping out. So when that story was posted to Twitter, uh, when somebody suggested that he was dropping out on Twitter, um, all of the markets kind of went nuts. The um, this, the individual market for Bernie dropping out went to 95. Um, this market, um, for how many candidates would it would be in, uh, was obviously rocked, um, and uh, those markets just haven't come back yet. So I, I expect that by the end of the day, that uh, that second bracket no will probably be about back to where it was when when Mike was making money on it. <laughs> so right now it's trading at about 49 cents, and you expect that to get back up to the mid 50s. I would say so, unless there's some kind of news um, within, you know, the next couple of hours about Sanders potentially dropping, or I haven't heard anything about Tulsi Gabbard. Um, if there's any news, obviously it'll it'll probably still be a little shaky, but if not, I, I, I would expect that bottom bracket uh, with all three of them remaining in, I would expect that to go back up, and I would expect the first two uh, to go back down. Well, Tulsi did speak about an hour ago. In fact, she uh, launched a, a video via Twitter just within the last hour. Let's listen in. So we've got some good news to share. Last week before I left Congress, I introduced a resolution calling on the federal government to immediately begin a universal basic payment of at least $1,000 a month to every single American tax-free to help them weather this storm of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, it's been good to see over the last few days that there are Democrats and Republicans in the House and the Senate to include today President Trump and Mnuchin, who have all started speaking out in support of this direct cash payment to every American. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds to me like someone who's still running for president. Yeah, I think she and Sanders are both making the same move, which is to switch from actively campaigning to promoting legislation. Bernie kind of said as much um, during his non-concession last night that he would be focusing over the next couple of weeks on promoting a, a sort of legislative agenda that uh, that helps um, reimburse businesses and uh, helps people that are out of work as a result of the pandemic. So I don't think that either of them is going to technically drop out. Um, I could be wrong. But I think they're going to use these campaigns as a means of, of elevating their legislation to to help improve the economic situation. Well, conspicuously absent from that video was any mention of her campaign or or or, or the race itself. And yet she did have numbers that came in uh, Arizona last night. She had twenty seven hundred votes out of five hundred and thirty nine thousand. In Illinois, 9,000 votes were cast for her out of 1.5 million, and in Florida, about 8,000 out of more than 1.7 million. In each of those three primary markets, she received about one half of 1% of the votes tallied. So she really isn't a candidate, but for predicted purposes and for your your recommended trade, she is definitely in it. So there appears to be no news. So 
So just revisiting last week's trade, do you still like that position of 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 a no on the two on the second bracket? Yeah, I might also take a yes on the third um, because uh, as we're as we're talking, I don't think anybody's going anywhere. Um, I could be wrong about Bernie. Obviously, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of pressure on him from uh, the media and, and establishment figures to uh, to get out of the way so that Biden can focus on um, pivoting to the general election. Um, but it seems like he has uh, different ideas. Otherwise, he wouldn't have um, his campaign wouldn't have corrected the reports earlier in the day that he was dropping out. And a yes on uh, on the third bracket is trading at about 26 cents right now. So yeah, there's a new trade recommendation that we weren't expecting. Well, let's move on to the second uh, recommendation you made last week and take a look at that. That was an interesting market, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about this. The question was, will or the market is, will Trump grant clemency to Roger Stone in his first term? You suggested buying no on clemency. It was trading then about 38 cents. And right now it's trading at about 43 cents. Is that right, Mike? Yes. Yeah, around 43 cents. So so it's been a good trade so far. Um, and it's been, it traded much, much higher. And of course, the news that occurred over the weekend that impacted this was President Trump tweeted on Sunday that he is strongly considering a full pardon of Michael Flynn, who was his former national security advisor, who pleaded guilty in 2017 to lying to the FBI as part of its investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. And of course, that tweet suggesting that he would grant clemency to Michael Flynn impacted this market and brought that price back down. So what's your take on that now? Uh, My take's about the same. I I do think there's going to be a little volatility um, from time to time when these stories come up in the news, maybe. Trump will tweet about it as he did in, in this case, uh, but I don't think it makes sense for him to to actually pull the trigger and, and grant clemency or to issue a full pardon for Flynn until after the election. Uh, I don't think it makes sense for him to be talking about it during a pandemic. I, I think that um, really looks, I think the optics of it are really bad. Um, so I think he's going to be advised not to actually do it. Um, of course, you know, he's kind of a wild card, so you can never really know what he's going to do. But my, my money's on um, him waiting or not doing it at all, but certainly waiting until after the election to even, you know, consider uh, whether or not that's the right move to make. So uh, let's move on to the let's move on to the next one. But I should mention that there are alternative markets uh, related to this. Paul Manafort's clemency is currently a 31 cent. Yes. Michael Flynn is at a 73 cent yes. Stone is at about 57 cents. Well, we do have a, a Roger Stone uh, update for our listeners if you want to share that before we move on to the next market. Well, you want to give it a little background? Well, uh, for listeners who may or may not be familiar with it, there's a website called Cameo. Um, Luckbox Magazine actually did a profile on the uh, co CEO of Cameo, Stephen Galanis, and he was really excellent. And uh, Roger Stone's on Cameo now. So for those of you who may not know what Cameo is, it's a website where you can uh, pay a few bucks to have your favorite celebrities, be them uh, politicians, I guess, or actors or athletes. Uh, they make personalized greetings or videos for you. So we have a, a little little clip from Roger Stone's page. This is Roger Stone. That's right, the Roger Stone. And I'm right here on Cameo. So if you want a special greeting, say a birthday greeting or an anniversary greeting, maybe a special greeting for your club or organization, I'd love to hear from you. And yes, we'll get you Roger Stone. I can't think of any better way to celebrate a birthday than with a personalized greeting from Roger Stone. I know that that's certainly going to be on my wish list this year. What do you, what do you, what do you think, Derek? Is that, um, is that in, any indication of where this clemency is going to go? Well, for a second there, I thought you guys had already um, contracted him to make a video saying I was wrong, and I was just waiting for it. And <laughs> so I'm kind of... Stay tuned, by the way. That's <laughs> we, that's exactly what we have in mind. So we, we, we do plan to reach out to Roger through Cameo. And uh, one other detail for those who may be interested in, you know, getting one of these videos, he's currently uh, charging $50 per video. So uh, pretty cheap. Yes, pretty, pretty cheap for uh, a Roger Stone. 
which is about, and he's trading at about 43 cents right now in clemency. So so <laughs> let's take a look at your third position, your third recommendation from last week um, before we get into your new trade recommendations later on in the segment. You, um, you asked us to look at the 2020 Alabama Republican Senate primary. That market basically has a uh, uh, Tuberville, Tommy Tuberville, who's the former Auburn University football coach, running against Jeff Sessions, former attorney general, um, for the Alabama Republican Senate primary seat. That price then was 10 cents. And when you advocated buying a yes on Sessions at 10 cents, uh, Mike jumped right in. I put a price order in and I didn't get filled. Mike took it from 10 all the way to 20 already. Um, is that right, Mike? Is that Yep, and uh, around twenty cents is where it's sitting uh, right now. So, so Mike has doubled his money t- uh, taking your advice. I was pinching pennies, God knows why. But uh, where are you now on that position? The governor of Alabama just pushed that election back, uh, I believe, to the the end of June, if I'm not mistaken. It might even be the end of July, standing out of my head, but I think that's wrong. But in any event, it gives a lot more time for, for sessions to. Um, put together a good campaign and maybe to distance himself from Trump who might, you know, run into a little bit of, of hot water here with the, uh, the economy and the, the pandemic. So my idea with the, with this pick was just that it was a bad price. I, I thought that sessions was worth more than 10 cents and the market is kind of saying the same thing now. And do you think there's upside here? I mean, l- let me, let me update you a little bit. In the last 24 hours, Sessions has received a, an, an endorsement from the Eagle Foreman Forum PAC, which was founded by Phyllis Schlafly, and the Alabama Forestry Association has endorsed him. But the NRA also endorsed Sessions last week as well. And uh, a poll that was commissioned by, by the Club for Growth last week showed Tuberville with only a narrow lead, 49% to 45%, but that was prior to Trump's endorsement, and then that lead jumped to 24 points following the endorsement. So the endorsement did definitely widen out the race in Alabama, but Sessions has received some material endorsements um, from conservative groups in Alabama. So do you think there's some upside here at 20 cents, or would you like to go back and buy it at a lower level again? I think it has some room to to roam. I, I think maybe it'll get up to 25 or 30. I think time is really just a good thing for sessions in this situation. Um, it's it's just a way for him to put things together and to change the narrative. I, I think in a month, nobody's going to be really talking about or thinking about the endorsement. Um, it's it's, it's going to be an entirely different election. So. So yeah, I, I wouldn't mind holding at 20, um, maybe trying to get out at 30 or so, but I, I definitely wouldn't be buying the other way at 80. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that at all. Well, you were three for three last week on your trading recommendations. We wanted to walk through those before you give us uh, three new trades. But our next segment, as you know, we ask our expert traders to share and explain a trading tactic that they rely upon to achieve uh there are great returns, and I think your your story is that you wrote for us for Luckbox Magazine. In the current issue, by the way, you can go to getluckbox.com and register to receive the magazine in digital form for free. Um, you wrote the story about how you turned $400 into $400,000. Where would that account be one week later? Um, I, I think I've had a pretty good week. I, I'd say I, I made another three thousand, so we can we can change it to four hundred and three thousand. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Maybe that's our next title. Well, we're going to come right back after this short break, and we're going to ask you uh, to walk over another trading tactic with us. All right, we're back with Derek Phillips. Uh, you could follow him on Twitter, and you should. He's DMP from PI. The PI stands for Predict It, of course. And Derek, we're back with you. Take us back to school last week, last episode, which everyone should go back and listen to episode number five. You spoke about penny flipping. And before we get on to your new tactic, let's revisit that for a little bit. I had a follow-up question or two, and I know Mike wanted to share his his results with you, just taking your advice from last week. Well, yes, I, I certainly uh, invoked penny flipping during the last debate. I think we talked about that at the top. And uh, it, it really worked out in my favor. It's a really nice strategy. 
Uh, it's, it's as you said, Derek, you just have to get in line, be patient, wait for those shares, and just sell them for one cent more. No sense in getting greedy. If you do it enough times, you can make a, a pretty big uh, pretty big growth following the strategy. So I have some questions for you, Derek, based, based on that, because we were both looking at that tactic carefully and, um, and had some questions about its implementation and execution. So do you ever use stops when you're penny flipping? So in other words, do you ever put an order in if the if the market moves against you as a protective stop you mean to sell yes so if you're buying at 20 cents and you're looking to flip at 21 would you ever have an order at 19 to sell that position i would probably before i do that i would sell it back at cost um so if i'm flipping from 20 to 21 and i re realize that the the volume at 20 is getting a little thin and, and maybe it seems like the market might be on a run um, I would just uh, sell into an open offer if it's there, or if it's not, if there's not an open offer there, I would just put my 20 cents back um, at the end of the line and, and hope that somebody fills it then. If, if you're buying at 20, are you immediately entering an order to sell at 21, or are you watching the market move before you do that? Uh, immediately. You're immediately entering your offset order. Okay. And then, and finally, are you trading both sides of penny flipping or are you trading with a trend? So in other words, in a market that you bought at 19 because you think there's essentially an uptrend and there's a floor to that market, you're buying at 19, selling at 20, buying at 19, selling at 20, or are you trading both sides, buying at 19, selling at 20, buying a no at 20 and buying it back at, at 19? I usually, um, I usually stay on this on one side. Um, for the entire duration of, of the play. Um, and the, the side that I choose is usually the side that I like. So if it's a, if it's a position where I think I like the price of yes better, um, I'll, I'll flip in that direction because I, I feel like if the price does kind of go uh, run away from me, like you were asking in, in your first question there, I'd much rather have some shares underwater of a position that I like than a position that I think is a bad price. So you are trading your penny flipping strategy on the side favoring your market bias on any particular trend. So if you think there's an uptrend, um, you're, you're trading on the upside only and not trading both sides of the market. Most of the time, if it's really stable, if I feel like the price just isn't gonna budge, I do like to trade on the side where there are more shares, you know, because there's, there's more bang for your buck. So if it's a choice between 20 or 80, you know, I can get, what, five times the number of shares on the 20 cent side than I, than I can on the 80 cent side. Terrific. Okay. So, so what tactic are you going to be sharing with us this week? So what I'd like to share this week is to um, share a strategy I use to make me feel like I have a little bit more control and embedding in position. Um, and that's to bet against something happening. Um, a lot of times we have um, markets like tweet markets, polling markets, um, filing markets, where we're betting whether something happens on a specific day or at a specific time. And I like to bet against that. So how does the strategy work? So for instance, in the, the tweet markets, you are, you're literally betting on whether a tweet happens, uh, a tweet comes. Uh, what I like to do is I, I like to bet against it so that uh, against the tweet coming so that uh, I'm using time on, on my side, you know, as time goes on, it will um, improve the price of my shares. And then, you know, when a tweet comes, a lot of times I'll uh, be able to dump at cost or, you know, slightly uh, below cost in worst case scenario, or, you know, in most cases, the market's already moved um, far enough to where I win, even if I, you know, dump, even if those tweets come. Well, specifically, Derek, uh, predicted just launched a new market. How many tweets will Donald Trump post from noon, March 18th to March 25th? Uh, the lowest bracket says 169 or fewer. The top bracket says 240 or more. And there's about 10 markets, 10 brackets involved in that market. So in this market, how many tweets will Trump post from noon, March March 18th through 25th. Could you illustrate the tactic a little bit? Sure. So what I would do in, in this market, and I, I haven't done it yet just because it, um, it opened when we were on the phone here, um, but uh, I would probably buy no in the bottom bracket and yes in the top bracket. So that's buying yes in the bracket for 169 tweets or fewer and no in the bracket for um, 240 or more. 
And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of sitting on it and I'm monitoring um, Twitter. And when um, the tweets come, you know, if, when the next time, uh, if it looks like he's gonna tweet seven or eight tweets in a row or more, I'm able to dump both of those at about approximately the same price that I um, that I paid for them. You know, if I ever get uncomfortable, I can dump it at a price that is not much different from what I paid, unless you know it's been a couple of hours or you know it's been half a day and and he hasn't tweeted. Um, I'm probably going to be able to get out at ten cents or more um, of profit. You know, just by being able to sit on it. And is that for the purpose of eliminating those brackets then? Um, no, not necessarily eliminating um, because there's a lot of volatility in these. Um, they do go up and down. Um, next time he logs in, um, I'm sure he'll he'll put B1 down to size and he'll inflate uh, B9 here um, to uh, to suggest that that bracket is um, is in play. Um, so it's not about eliminating. It's just taking advantage of time. And making sure that I'm in a position to to monitor the Twitter account and um, stay in front of the action, and when the action comes, to be the first person to respond to it, or among the first person, uh, among the first people, so that I can, um, you know, get out at cost when I need to, uh, but sell at a profit when you know it works in my favor. How often do you use this, and how much profits do you attribute to this strategy? Um, I use it on most of the popular Twitter markets. Um, certainly the real Donald Trump market, um, the White House market. Uh, I probably do it once or twice every week. Uh, it could be done any day. The essential point of it is that you have to be able to monitor what's going on. You can't set it and forget it on this one. And this always, does it always involve buying the front bracket and selling the back bracket or vice versa? Do you always? Yeah, it does. Um, I um, well, maybe the first bracket is is dead by you know by next uh, by by the weekend, for instance, and then you know the fourth bracket might be the first bracket. But whatever is the the lowest bracket as far as the tweet number is is concerned, that is still in play, um, and it can be pretty cheap. I mean, if if the the price is three cents. Um, it doesn't take much to double your money there. You just have to get it up to six cents. So if you can, if there's enough of a drought to where it moves from three to six, you've doubled your money. Is there any tool that you use to keep track of the number of tweets that these people are sending out? Or do you just follow the market or read the comments? Or, or where do you go for that kind of information? There's a couple of free tools that traders have developed for keeping track of the tweets. Um, if you come into the market and you ask in the comment board, on the comment board, anybody will tell you. Can you um, trust that? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's, these are tools that everybody uses. Um, and they're, they're, really, they're really handy because they are faster a lot of times than the Twitter API. Um, so you can stay ahead of people that you know, aren't taking advantage of it. Um, but uh, we, I mean, it's a, it's a good community of, of traders. We, we don't mind helping each other out. And, and certainly, you know, uh, lending you these tools isn't going to cost us any, any money. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that, Derek. We're going to be back in a moment. And it's time we get to your three new recommended trades for this, this coming week. And we'll be right back after a short break. But first, want a little more luck in your life? Get Luckbox, the control freak's guide to life, money, and probability. Named the best new magazine of 2019. Luckbox is a must read for side hustlers, gamblers, entrepreneurs, and active investors. Each issue features best bets from prediction market experts, as well as timely sports wagering, stocks, options, futures, and cryptocurrency trading ideas. You can buy Luckbox on newsstands, but with this special offer, Listeners of The Political Trade can receive a 10-issue digital subscription absolutely free. Just visit GetLuckBox.com to receive the award-winning magazine right in your inbox. Don't rely on luck. Get Luckbox for free today. Learn more at GetLuckBox.com. Okay, we're back for our favorite segment where each... Each episode, we ask our super traders for their three best trading recommendations in the predicted markets today. 
And we know how well Derek fared last week for us, basically going three for three. So, Derek, we're going to put you back in the, the hot seat again today and ask for your three trading recommendations today. So what's your first recommendation for us? So first trade I have is is Bernie to lose Oregon or Joe Biden winning Oregon, the Oregon primary. Uh, I put this list together yesterday and the value's gone up a little bit. So you're not getting as good a deal, but you can still get it for about 85 cents. About 89 cents for or 85 to 87 cents is is the range right now for Joe to win. How much room is there on the Bernie now? There's probably not a lot. I haven't checked in. Um, I think that price might have also gotten scared by the uh, the events earlier of him potentially dropping. Uh, I imagine that if he is in it to to stay for at least the next couple of weeks, I imagine that price will probably crawl back to um, 85 or so uh, over the, the next couple of weeks. That is kind of the state that a lot of uh, Bernie um, folks are hanging their hat on saying that he still has a chance to win. But the odds are materially against it. I think that's one of the things that fascinate, fascinated Mike and I when we first started looking at these markets, that there were, there were so many markets that appeared to be layups or, or easy money, um, where, where the outcome was so prominently assured, yet the market wasn't necessarily reflecting that in its pricing. So there is very little opportunity, I think, for Bernie Sanders to walk away with Oregon. And you would think this would be trading at 95 percent or higher. And the opportunity to be able to pick up essentially 12 percent uh, over a short period of time on any investment seems to be seems to be a gift. Um, what should we be looking at when some things look too good to be true? Well, there's a there's a lot of opportunities exactly like that. And that's kind of why I picked this Oregon um, market as an example, that in so many of these markets that have, or these uh, primaries that have been pushed back, the total isn't adding up to 100 cents. It's not adding up to a dollar. So you get Biden, yes, for instance, in Oregon here at 85 cents. And and uh, Bernie is only trading at about five. Um, the reason that is, is because uh, a lot of people are thinking that all of these primaries are gonna be canceled, that um, they just won't record anything and that all contracts will go to no. But I think that's a pretty serious mistake that a lot of traders are making here. I, I can't see any of these primaries just being completely taken off the map. I see, so it appears to be an easy money trade. And we say that with a caveat, but your first trade, who will win the 2020 Oregon Democratic primary, is a yes for Joe, somewhere in the high 80s. And there's still a material single-digit no opportunity for Bernie in that same market. So we'll, we'll move on to the next recommendation for the second trade. What do you have for us? Yeah, this one's kind of a, a layup as well. Um, it's the will um, the economy enter a recession within the next, what is it, I guess, uh, nine months, so t in 2020. Um, I've struggled with it, uh, not necessarily the result because I think it's a, I think it's a done deal, uh, but I've wondered about the cost, the cost at 80 cents. And the cost uh, is trading around 82 cents right now, but a recession seems all but likely at this point. Of course, a recession, according to the Bureau of Economic Advisors, or Bureau of Economic Analysis is when two consecutive quarters of negative real GDP occur, and that's what constitutes the legal definition of a of a recession. And as always, read the rules. It's just one click away in any particular market to make sure you understand the rules that are governing that market. And the last uh, Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley both came out within the last couple of weeks saying that they expect real GDP to come in 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 the next quarter, somewhere below anywhere from 1.3 to 1.5%. So that will be our first downtick. And it's likely based on the virus that a second a second downtick will follow. So this appears like a high probability trade, but only priced at 82 cents right now gives a lot of upside. Yeah, I, I have mixed feelings about the price because uh, I, I think there might be a little bit of room for a rebound. Um, you know, the, the stock market's been going up a thousand a day and then down at 2000. So I think there's a little bit of volatility there. And then I think when the um, when the bailout packages are announced, I, I think uh, there might be some 
activity on the the no side, you know, of people just thinking that the worst is is past and that um, that we can spend our way out of it. Um, so I'm I'm tempted to to wait down in the the low 70s to see if I can get a, a fill there. Um, but then I start thinking about you know, um, Nuchin was saying that 20 cent or 20 percent unemployment is on the way, and the the healthcare system is is ready to to see some uh, some stress and strain um, as a result of the pandemic. So I I'm wondering if I just want to take that 80 cents now and just uh, you know call it a day. Okay. So either way, all eyes on the recession numbers for the first term. Uh, current pricing somewhere around 80 cents offering a good return your third and final suggestion for the day is somewhere in the heartland i understand right yes uh, i mean this is one of my favorite kind of bets to make it is um a democrat to win in minnesota for the 2020 presidential election so if we look back just to give this context in 2016 in minnesota clinton won the popular vote by about a 1.5 percent margin, it looked at somewhere between 44 and 45,000 votes over Trump in 2016, and you believe basically that the Democrats will repeat again for the state of Minnesota. Well, what I like about the bet, um, what makes it my favorite kind of bet to make, is that I think there's there's a good chance that um, that Biden, if he's the nominee, will pick Amy Klobuchar. And if he picks Klobuchar, who's trading about uh, 32 cents, if he picks her to be his vice president, uh, his vice presidential nominee, that price is probably going to go up to 95 cents. Because last time Klobuchar was on the Senate, uh, the last time Klobuchar was on the ballot for re-election in Minnesota, she got about 90 percent of the vote. So the way I look at it, it's kind of a free roll. If you if he picks Klobuchar, you're an automatic winner. And if he doesn't, you're probably still getting a good price at about 75 cents for the Democrat to win there anyway. That's that's great rationale. It's uh, it's interesting now that the conventional wisdom has been that the de Democrats would choose a, a woman of color and for the VP nominee. And we've talked about the VP market quite a bit on this uh, on this podcast over the last couple of weeks. But there does seem to be a trend lately uh, in favor of Klobuchar. She's now in the number one slot in the VP market at 32 cents with um, Kamala Harris behind her in the 29 cents spot. And then followed by Stacey Abrams, uh, also a woman of color at 15 cents. So uh, Klobuchar does look like the likely, uh, certainly the front runner. And you're right, that would result in an immediate um, win for this Minnesota Democratic uh, uh, a bet that you've identified as your third trade. So I get that. So I so thanks for the three trades. I've got a question for you, actually, for an outstanding trade. Yesterday, as you know, we had the, the, the four primaries scheduled, but Ohio did not go off. As a result of that, the Ohio market is still open. And I'm curious about something. It actually, it relates to a personal position that I have, but you can. this could be educational for everybody. I was fortunate enough to get a really good price on the, the, the last bracket, which was a 19% or more margin of victory in Ohio. But since the election or the primary was called off, there hasn't been a lot of trading and it hasn't resolved. It's sitting at 85 cents right now because a 19% percent margin of victory or greater is highly likely in Ohio. So there appears to be 15 cents on the table right now. My question is, uh, the the governor came out today and said that that election is not likely, that primary will not likely be scheduled until June. But I would imagine if in the interim that Bernie Sanders were to drop out of the race, if that were to occur, that that market would immediately spike up. Is that how you would see that? How would you handicap that market right now? Would you stay away from it and wait for its resolution? Or do you think there's still an opportunity to take advantage of the 85 cent, 90, 19% or more pricing in the margin of victory market? So I think that this market is a lot similar to the Oregon market and that the reason why it's not higher is just because there's a lot of uncertainty about whether there actually will be a 
primary, you know, whether they will call it off. And, and as I've said, I, I think that's kind of misguided that I, I do think that there will be um, results recorded. Uh, I do think that it'll be better than 19% um, percent margin of victory. The Illinois results were a pretty good indicator of that. So I think it's one of those plays where if you have a lot of money, you know, if you have a pretty big bankroll, you can hold on to it. But if liquidity is an issue for you, um, you know, if you don't want to wait around till June to get that 15 percent, um, a lot of uh, a lot of people are selling out. That's part of the reason why it's so cheap is they people just don't want their money locked up. But I certainly wouldn't mind holding some money in there if, if I had enough. You know, I wouldn't want it to um, hamstring other plays that I'm making. Um, but if you can spare the money, it's certainly better than any mutual fund out there to, to wait uh, until June for, you know, a 19% return. Oh, that's true. That's good advice. So that's the uh, Ohio Democratic primary margin of victory market and the final bracket at 19 cents. 19% or more trading at 85 cents. You gave us three trades today, three new trades. Um, uh, basically that uh, Joe will win the Oregon Democratic primary, that there will be a recession in the first term, and that the Democrats will win Minnesota in the 2020 presidential election. And we encourage all the listeners to take a good look at those markets. Uh, Derek's advice did well for us last week. And remember that if you're listening to this podcast and you haven't already signed up on Predict It, you are in luck because you can take advantage of the tactics and trades that are shared by our guests like Derek Phillips by going to predictit.org slash tpt20. Just sign up, deposit $20, and we will match the first $20 you deposited. Deposit 20, you'll have 40 to trade with. It's that simple. Uh, don't just listen to the political trade, sign up and trade along. So we're going to be right back with Derek after a short break. As always, we ask our guests for the luck box of the week. We'll be right back. All right, we're back and we're back with Derek Phillips. As you know, each week, we have the luck box of the week, which is a suggestion by our guest as to who qualified as the undeserving recipient of a favorable outlier outcome. That's what a luck box is. And uh, you have somebody in mind for us. The uh, luck box of the week, uh, this week goes to the traders in the Steve Bullock, um, will Steve Bullock run for Senate in Montana market? Well, as you know, Steve Bullock was a was an early 2020 presidential candidate. He's notable as being the former governor of Montana. He's 54 years old. He had a big success as attorney general, uh, a challenge against the Citizens United decision uh, through his defense of Montana's 100-year-old ban on corporate campaign spending. He won in the Montana Supreme Court, but the U.S. Supreme Court ruled against the state of Montana in a 5-4 in a decision. And he dropped out very early in the presidential race. But but uh, where do you think he'll be in running for Senate in Montana? Yeah, I, I don't know uh, much about his prospects. I, I haven't looked too much about it, too much at it. But uh, the reason why I picked this one is that the, the market for whether he would run was kind of not dependent on actually whether he would run, but whether he would file his paperwork in time. So this market kind of devolved into what we like to call uh, unpredicted as a, as a classic predicted shit show. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what happened? So the rules weren't, um, the rules for this one weren't all that great. Um, they tied resolution to whether he would file with the FEC um, by the, the deadline. And the deadline was, um, a deadline imposed by the Secretary of, of State uh, as to uh, for him to be on the ballot. So he needed to get his paperwork filed with them and uh, by, I, I can't remember exactly when the date was, but he had to get it filed by the, the day that the market would be resolved. Um, eventually, uh, by the end of the day, he did end up filing his presidential paperwork, but there were a lot of people that got lucky who dumped those positions that ended up winning in the end after all. So I guess we can amend Scott Supak's rule, uh, rule to read the rules, to read the rules once, read them a second time, and then still cross your fingers. <laughs> that's right. I see. So so that's our luck box of the week. Um, 
before we head out, there are a couple of announcements that I want to share with our listeners. Um, we're really excited to remind our listeners that we'll be dropping a bonus episode this week with former White House Director of Communications, Anthony Scaramucci. So we're really looking forward to having Anthony on. It's going to be later on this week. It's one of the reasons you want to subscribe to this podcast. So you're the first to know when this uh, new podcast is dropped. And it's not too late to send in questions for the Mooch. Send them to us on Twitter. And we may pick a few to ask him during tomorrow's recording and mention your name. You can also visit luckboxmagazine.com and click on the podcast tab. And you can send us questions through that tab as well. Podcasts on luckboxmagazine.com. And then next week's guest also, a new guest, will be someone we've talked a whole lot about over the course of the podcast. Another super trader in the Derek Phillips category, it's I Savage, who's noted among all active prediction market traders for his famous I Savage rule. We're going to ask him more about that rule. I'll tease our listeners with the I Savage rule, but it's something you need to know if you're trading on Predicted. Uh, Derek, you've been great, and thanks so much for joining us. I remind our listeners also, you can read the story that Derek wrote, how I turned $400 into 400000 on prediction market trading. It's in Luckbox Magazine in the current issue, and you can just go to getluckbox.com and register to receive the magazine for free in digital format. And in that edition and the article that Derek wrote for us are three other trades that we have never discussed on the podcast. So those are longer term suggestions, trading suggestions that Derek made for us. And they are in the magazine. Uh, just go to getluckbox.com and you can register for free. So Derek, thank you again for joining us. Thank you guys. And thanks for listening. Of course. And thanks for tuning in to everybody else. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss anything coming up the road. This is Jeff Joseph. And I'm Mike Reddy. And wash your hands, don't touch your face, stay healthy, and join us next week on The Political Trade.